to you by Sprite. It's the 2K Sports pregame show. Hello again, everybody. I'm Ernie Johnson along with Shaquille O'Neal on 2K for Houston. It's always an exciting time of the year as fans and other players and coaches around the league all getting a first look at how they might be shaping up for the upcoming season. Tip-off coming up here, and uh, let's talk about just the whole concept of teamwork and team chemistry and what makes a good teammate, Shaq. Well, it's a brotherhood, Ernie. You want to play with guys who have your back, guys who care as much about your success as their own, and guys who put the team first. And does winning just follow when you have that kind of a... Must respect each other. Things to remember. Remember about teamwork in the NBA. Uh, let's... It's time for the NBA, live on 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harlan with Steve Kerr and Clark Kellogg alongside. And our sideline reporter tonight is Doris Burke. The fans are making some noise here at the American Airlines Center in Dallas for their Mavericks. And the Rockets. Beverly and Harden man the back here. Smith out there with help, and it's a reason in at the small four. Josh Smith does an awful lot of good things on the floor. As a matter of fact, he's one of the really high-quality stat sheet stuffers in the NBA. But one of the things he doesn't do quite well is shoot three-point, and yet he continues to insist that that be a big part of his game. And so it's the Mavericks getting on the board first. Beverly, Jordan with the rebound. Excellent. Really solid job, actually, by the defense to get in his way as he was going up for that one. He got that one up quick. He had his head on the swivel and was able to pick out the pass and get the assist. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time getting the lid off the basket so far. Howard against Jordan. And Beverly kicks to Howard. And the layup's good off the glass. Love the interior passing. He knew exactly where to go with that ball. For Dallas, they've gone two or three here to start out the game. Lawson drives in. Here's Aldridge. Good. Aldridge has got his second basket of the game. Looks like he might be on his game today, Clark. Rockets have gone one of three from the field to start this one so far. Harden the pass to Howard. And he makes no mistake on the slam dunk. You know, how exciting is it, guys, to see him go hard to the basket like that? I love it. It's always fun to see, and it's one of the sights you can count on when he's out there, for right, sure. Yeah, but you've got to try to do more to slow him down. You can't play him so soft near the hoop. Mavericks on D. It's Harden with the drive. Reeves it is to Harden. Puts it up from 12, and he gets the jumper to drop. Harden's got his first bucket in this one. He's such a well-rounded offensive player. He's got a little bit of everything. Now we'll go to Doris Burke, who had a chance to talk with head coach Kevin McHale. He told 
talked about the respect he has for the game of LaMarcus Aldridge and how tough it will be for them to slow him down, saying Aldridge is tough because he can score facing up or with his back to the basket. And with his length, it's tough to bother his shot. We'll look to deny him the ball when we can and just try to make it as hard as possible every touch. Kevin will see how successful they are. Thank you, Doris. A lot of things go into a team being successful. But one key is being efficient offensively, and the Mavericks were one of the more efficient teams in the league because they understood where their best shots came from and usually took those shots. And here is Howard following Monte Ellis's three. Good on the shot. About three minutes gone here in the first quarter. He dishes it to Jordan. Outside for Lawson. Pass to Aldridge. That is in there. Lawson with the assist. Lawson's got three assists in the game. Guys, you would think as they get older, less shots would fall for them. But for the Mavs, it just hasn't been the case. A top offense last year, as you guys were talking about. Well, they got older, and they seem to get smarter. They added a couple of really nice pieces in the backcourt. And as we know, Rick Carlisle, terrific coach, putting his players in a position to succeed. So that was an excellent offense last year. Now here's Ellis. Five points in the game. It's tipped. And it's out of bounds to the Mavericks as Dallas retains possession. Super defensive play. I mean, if that pass gets through, it's probably two points. And he knew that. He knew if it gets through, it's a score. So that's why he sold out for it and got a hand on it. Harden with it. Now Lawson defending. It's Harden with the drive. Here's Howard. And a good offensive board. And he gets the bucket. Howard's got eight points. These defenders look overmatched right now, especially inside. Yeah, you look at the numbers. Ten of the last 12 points have come from close range, so I agree. And that one's good. Seven points for Ellis. Boy, such outstanding patience and decision-making for them offensively. Yeah, absolutely. Their ball movement has been outstanding. They are piling up the assists. Now, here is Smith. Why? with a big group substitution here. Terrence Jones is checked in for Howard. Monte Yunus comes in for Trevor Ariza. Brewer is checked in for James Harden. And it's Terry in for Patrick Beverly. Well, Josh Smith, one of the league's most versatile defenders, and very strong and athletic. And can guard either threes or fours, which gives your defense a lot of options. 127 left in the first quarter. And it's Terry off the drive, and it's blocked by Jordan. And he gets it back. Terry kicks to Smith. Back to Terry. Second shot opportunity. Good. Boy, this game is off to a terrific start. No doubt. On both sides, high-octane offense. It's a completely new group on the floor for the Mavericks. And a moment here to take a look at the scoring breakdown for the Rockets. And the points they're getting in the lane will really help them open up the floor. The other thing they've had going for them tonight is their passing. I mean, doing a nice job. Plenty of their points early on coming off assists. Now, here is Young. Nowitzki, that's for two. Again, the Mavericks score. 59 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Terry, the pass to Jones. Kicks it out to Terry. Back to Jones. And Dirk Nowitzki gets the whistle that time. That's his first foul of the game, and the bonus will go to the free throw line. The Rockets shooting their third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. Well, last season they only hit 71% of their free throws, so this is a continuing problem, guys. And, you know, there was plenty of blame to go around for that. I mean, it wasn't just one or two guys. I mean, for the most part, the entire team struggled. Well, the Rockets, wouldn't you say, are really to be commended, Clark, for rebuilding this team without tearing it down to the studs or, or tanking, if you will. Yeah, absolutely, Kevin. I mean, they've improved dramatically with Harden and Howard. But this is a team that's held a winning record in the West now for eight straight seasons. It's pretty impressive. It is. Houston in the lead. Here's Bonnie Eunice. 
tries yet again. On the wing, Terry. Seven second difference, shot and game clock. Goes up again, and Monty Yunus, the basket on the assist by Jones. For Dallas, they've gotten eight of their 13 shots to find the bottom of the bucket. Harris dishes to Nowitzki, and the three ball is good. Nowitzki's got five points so far. You know, what an advantage he brings to this offense, guys. I mean, being able to drain the three ball, that really can spread a defense and extend the defense as well. In the corner, Smith with it. Terry outside. Good if it goes. No good on that last second attempt there. And at the end of one, both teams putting up some points. Houston on top, leading by just one. And don't go away. We'll be back with the action for the start of the second quarter in just a moment. Welcome back, folks. We have a close game here at the start of the second quarter of play. And looking at what we've seen from Houston, what do you guys think? They've done a nice job on the offensive boards here, guys, and I think that was the difference in that first quarter, really pounding the offensive glass. Well, they set the tone early with their mindset, their tenacity, and their hustle. I mean, that's the way they've come out, and it's um, served them well. The Rockets shooting 53% from the floor. They're locked in. This is how the floor looks for the Rockets starting the second. They've got Jones. Terry is out there with Brewer. Then it's Trevor Ariza. And it's Monty Yunus in at the four slot. And Aminu kicks to Chandler. Harris outside. And he gets it to go. Harris has got the first basket of the second quarter for the Mavs. And the lead goes right back over. This is a seesaw affair. The game's there for the taking, but neither team seems to want it. Well, we've all seen what Tyson Chandler can accomplish when healthy, and that is some kind of force. Yeah, you know, maybe the best stretch of his career was at the start of the decade, a 2011 title with the Mavericks, 2012, he got a gold medal in London, and was the defensive player of the year in the league, and in 2013, an all-star. Yeah. He was a strong three-season run. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to Doris Burke. Doris? Well, guys, Dirk Nowitzki has a game that certainly should age well. He said standing in the corner shooting a three ball will never be a problem to still perform at a high level. A pretty honest assessment, guys. A great work ethic, Doris, and he holds himself to that standard all the time. Thanks. Out of bounds. Rockets ball as Houston keeps possession. Well, Tyson Chandler has battled injury throughout his career. He had the bulged disc in his neck uh, that hindered him for parts of last season. And I think that was a big reason for the Knicks' struggles. Catching up on the changes for Houston. Howard's checked in for Monty Yunus. Harden comes in for Corey Brewer. And it's Patrick Beverly in for Jason Terry. And it's Beverly missing. Well, I think that was clearly a four. He's a little anxious. Too much in a hurry right there. Look at Chandler, and when he's healthy, he's a terrific rim protector inside. And pretty good finisher around the rim, too, offensively. He's excellent as a screener in pick and rolls. It'll be interesting to see if he can get back to that peak level. Here's Amina. James Harden picking up that last basket. Second quarter of play with around two minutes gone so far. And there's a reason that's good on the assist by Harden. Harden's got his third assist on the night. Dallas has gotten a success rate of just over 50% from three-point tonight. Four of seven shooting. Chandler kicks to Young. Dallas, no good that time either. For Houston, they've gone two of six in the field in the second quarter so far. Howard, the pass to Harden. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Devin Harris. That's his first foul. A different look for Dallas. Amari Stoudemire is checked in for Chandler. Villanueva comes in for Al Farouk Aminu. And Morea subbed in for Devin Harris. Now here's Beverly. He's had some playing time, but no scoring yet from him. Lock at six. 
and the basket by Harden. And at the offensive end, he's done about as much as they could have hoped for today. Berea dishes to Young. It's good. Great play set up by Berea. Young's got six points in the quarter. Well, guys, this first half has been about as tightly contested as you could hope for. Well, neck and neck. How about that? I mean, ferociously competitive. I mean, tight as me in an airplane bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and Beverly kicks to Ariza. Here's Howard. No good. And the Mavericks going the other way now. Nowitzki right side. And the Mavericks getting another bucket right there. He's definitely got that shot in his arsenal. Rockets trail by three. Harden outside. Takes it off the glass. Harden's got ten points. Seems like they're on their heels every time defensively because the ball continues to go into the post. Well, if they don't pick up the aggression, things are only going to get worse. Perea, no good. Rockets have gone 4 of 10 in the second quarter from the field. The Rockets, of course, at the forefront or vanguard. They're doing something. Right. And Turk Nowitzki once again. Nowitzki's got four points in the quarter. That is some real serious dime dropping there. Exquisite assist. Now a timeout called by Houston. And at this part of the game, always important to stay focused. And while the coach goes over the game plan, these players are getting a much-needed chance to rehydrate and refuel with Gatorade. Hey, guys, uh, we know the drill well, all three of us drinking the Gatorade, too. Yeah, yeah no question. Right. I mean, Kevin, people all have them. no idea the fatigue that can set in during a telecast. And so it's important for us to stay hydrated all game long. Clark, you're always hydrated. Yeah, I try to be, but it's usually um, with a combination of H2O and Gatorade. I love Gatorade. Look at Steve. He has the Gatorade shirt on. Yeah, he's, all, he's really immersed in the Gatorade. Yeah. Gotta love it. <laughs> in for Jones. And now Doris Burke has an update from the sidelines. Well, guys, Kevin McHale had some advice for the team in that last break. He said their plan was run their offense through James Harden. Coach detailed the ways to ensure he's the one in charge out there, with the ball in his hands and the rest of the players falling in line behind him. So, Kevin, change is already being made on the fly here in the second quarter. And thank you for that, Doris. Nowitzki and Dallas again with the bucket. Beautiful feed off the bounce to his teammate there. Nicely done. Houston's gone 0-2 from deep here in the second. Mavs' ownership has made it clear their plans and hopes are that Dirk Nowitzki would remain a Maverick for the remainder of his Hall of Fame career. You look at what he meant to this team. The fourth most points scored with a single franchise in NBA history. A couple more seasons, and he can move up to third in that category. And it's slammed in by Howard. Went for the two-hander on that slam. That's where the weight room comes into play, Kevin. <laughs> I think some urgency from him there. Yeah, he's sensing this is a critical time in this game, guys. Now, here is Young. He has six. Shoots from 14. And a big bounce off the rim, but it sinks right in. 16 points for Dirk Nowitzki. And Steve, you talk about Nowitzki's career with the Mavs. A perennial playoff contender. Two trips to the finals. And, of course, the 2011 title. Well, he's been the cornerstone. I mean, not, not just a great player, but a great teammate as well. Just the way he approaches his work on a daily basis. The influence that he's had on that franchise is just remarkable. And the investment that they made in him and vice versa has pretty much made the Mavericks over the last decade plus. Rockets trail by five. Now, here's Beverly. There's the feed to Harden. And that one's good. Harden's got eight points in the quarter. 
Beautiful job angling his body, shielding the big man from the ball on his way to the basket. That's really the only way to do it if you're going to take it down there amongst the tall tree. Villanueva with the bucket. Excellent communication on the inbound play there, guys. He got in a good position, and the pass was as it needed to be on time and on target. And we're through two here in a good one. Mavericks lead by five. And now we'll send it down to Doris Burke, who's standing by courtside. Thank you, Kevin. Dwight, what's your assessment of the team you're playing here tonight? That's our team. You know, they play hard, they play together, they move the ball, and uh, they, they know how to play uh, within the offense, you know. And uh, we've been doing a better job on the defensive field, and I think tonight we came out with the right mentality. Just got to keep it up. Dwight, thank you. They know they've got their hands full, Kevin. Thank you, Doris, for that interview, and we'll see you back here after the break for the third quarter of basketball. Welcome back, everybody. The start of the second half getting underway. Both teams battling hard through the first half. A lot of action from Nowitzki. 16 points, and he's done a little bit of work behind the arc. He's got a pair of three-pointers. Well, the defenders have that in the back of their minds now, too, so they're going to close out on him quicker. That should allow him to use the drive if he wants. Trailed by five. Well, you know, the Mavericks got back into the playoffs last season after missing the playoffs in 13. And this is a team that expects to be a playoff factor. Aside from that one season, they have not missed the playoffs since 2000. Monte is the two with Parsons playing the small four. Jordan is out there with LaMarcus Aldridge, and it's Lawson in at the point. That's the lineup in the game for Dallas. And it's the Rockets with the ball. And you look at the legacy of success for the Mavs. You have to go back to 2000 to find the last time they had a losing season. Even in 2013, in what they term a disappointing year, they went 500 in the Cutthroat Western Conference. Pretty impressive. Harden's shot is off. That's terrific defense right there to prevent from converting in close. And slammed on by Jordan. Love the energy here in the third quarter, trying to exert their influence and take over this game. Well, this is the time to do it. They cannot let up at this point. Got to keep it going. Rockets trail by seven. The pass to Howard. Nice pass. Nice catch and a resounding dunk. They can always depend on him to put the pass right on the money. Dallas has gotten off 12 shots from beyond the arc tonight, hitting seven of them. And you look at how much ownership can impact the team's fortunes the first 20 years for the Mavericks. They've tracked 506 times, but... They've done it in every season under current ownership. Well, I know ownership is important, partner, but come on now. They do have Dirk Nowitzki, and he has a lot to do with that <laughs> winning record well as said, well. well. But no, no question about it. The Mavericks are clearly a first-rate franchise, and everybody from ownership on down can take pride in that. First one falls for him. You know, as great as Aldridge was in the first half of last year, you felt like he was going to really kick it into overdrive in the second half of the season because of his all-star snub. So LaMarcus Aldridge nails them both.
and Aldridge and saying he should have been a starter in last year's All-Star game. Probably comparing the Blazers' record at the time to that of Kevin Love's of Minnesota. Yeah, but it's not just team success. I mean, one thing for Aldridge, he takes some tough shots. A 23-point-per-game score, but his shooting efficiency was actually below average last season. Tell you what, shooting 20% to start the second half doesn't bode well for how this will play out for this one. You know, when you watch Monte Ellis, at least as I watch him, it seems he's always been best as a secondary scorer. We saw it back with the Warriors early in his career, and now playing with Dirk Nowitzki in Dallas, he's regaining some of that lethal efficiency. That's good from Ellis. And Ellis creating shots for others in Dallas almost as much as for himself. An attack guard able to drive and kick. He led the Mavs in assists. He's off on the second. And the signing of Monte Ellis for Dallas. Kind of a plan B after some of the bigger name free agents went elsewhere. But thus far, it's been a great fit. Yeah, you know, Dallas not far from his hometown of Jackson, Mississippi. I mean, he feels valued by the team and appreciated. They're winning. Uh, one of the top offensive teams in the league, and that plays well to the strengths of Monte Ellis. Dallas on defense, following the basket by Dwight Howard. And the foul on Monte Ellis. That'll be his second foul of the game. Howard with it. He's picked up by Jordan. Howard kicks to Harden. Pass to Smith. Tries to save it. Tried to make that interior pass, but it wasn't there. Now what's the pass to Aldridge? Good, and the assist goes to Ellis. Aldridge has got the lead up to eight. now for Dallas. You know, when the size advantage is that pronounced, I mean, that's exactly what you should do offensively in this situation. Take it strong to the middle. Some defensive breakdowns are starting to show up now. Their last four buckets allowed have come from very close range. And giving up these easy chances is going to do confidence. Now here is Aldridge. He's got 10. Parsons, right side. With the fadeaway. Again, the Mavericks score. They've been good on all three. shot since coming out of the locker room at the break. Rockets trailed by eight. Well, you know, not everybody was happy with Dwight Howard signing in Houston. Rockets starting center, Amir Ashik, was not shy about expressing his displeasure. You know, I think that hung over the team for a while. And it wasn't until late in the season that that was kind of put to rest. Now a timeout called by Houston. And early on last season, the Rockets tried starting Dwight Howard and Ashik together, but it didn't last. Year. Well, it worked defensively, Kevin, but on offense, there just wasn't enough.
spacing. So uh, from that point on, Kevin McHale would only use that combination uh, against certain matchups. But for the most part, he went with a smaller format. You know, that's a problem he has. I mean, not being able to knock down that open jump. It happens far too often. All right, let's go over to the sideline with Doris Burke. Guys, over that last break, I listened to Kevin McHale address his team. He said their plan was run their offense through James Harden. Their offense is most effective, Coach said, when he is most involved. And they're looking for total involvement from him for the rest of this game. Probably a good time to make some changes with a good chunk of the second half still to go, Kevin. Thanks a lot, Doris. Even when they're down, he's still looking to do the spectacular. And he pulled it off. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe this is the best time to do it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, now it's when they need a little spark anyway. Now, here's Brewer. Guarded closer. Good. It's Harden with the assist that time. Harden's got his seventh assist here tonight. Fires for three. It's rebounded by Houston. Jones has got his third rebound tonight. And it's Houston on the break. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. What a performance from Harden here. He has 14 points and seven assists. He is in complete control of this game. Yeah, it's just going his way. Everything falling into place. James Harden with the most famous beard in the NBA. In fact, he leaves his barber in charge of trimming it so you can give him all the credit or maybe the blame, depending on how you look at it. Free throw drops for Harden. In Harden, a relatively quiet demeanor. Some have even said moody, but clearly he's embraced his new leading role in Houston. And he says as much himself. He looks at the Rockets as his team, and you can see it in his demeanor on the court. Uh, with that leadership comes responsibility, and I think he's ready to continue to step into that. And both free throws good for James Harden. James Harden with those rush hour handles, whether it's breaking his man down in isolation or running the pick and roll, he keeps that thing on the string. Stupendous rush to the rim and a mighty slam on the end of it. But through the teeth of some pretty soft D, I can't help but say that. Well, let's see how that impacts things here. Because those kinds of plays sometimes can be game changers on both sides. Here is Harden following the basket by LaMarcus Aldridge. Brewer pushes to Jones. The runner. And the shot is good. And Harden, a left-hander. Defenders tend to have more trouble, it seems, guys, with softballs. Well, and especially with Harden because of how crafty he is. He's got that Manu Ginobili Euro move, the change of speed, change of direction, and then the strength. I mean, that's what separates him. He draws contact and seems to just go right through players. And that misses. That would have put him up. His touch has disappeared on him this point. He just hasn't been able to get it going. Parsons' shot is off. He's just been ice cold. I mean, he, he cannot find the range. It's Harden with the drive. Well, probably the right play defensively. If you can't get the block, send them to the free throw line. Don't give them an easy two. No easy buckets inside. Force free throws and work to keep them out of the lane next time around. And the first one drops. The Mavs have fallen back, Steve, in the West the last few years, but they were very much uh, in the hunt this past season. Well, they were in a battle for the final playoff spot in the West, and then they ended up in the eighth spot and took San Antonio all the way to seven games. So they did extremely well given the strength of the conference. And Dallas going with a whole new group out there. And it's tied up with that one. Well, you kind of expect that from him. You pretty much know what the result's going to be when he goes to the line. And it's Harris off the drive. And Aminu kicks to Nowitzki. From 10 feet out, the shot is good off the backboard. Nowitzki's got 18 points. You know, for the Mavs against the West, it, it was really about them hitting their shots. And they're a very good shooting team, especially when they played against Western Conference opponents. Here's Monte Yunus. Good. It's Harden with the assist that time. Harden's got assist number eight here in this one already. James Harden. And Young, here we go. And Harris wide open. He shoots that three off the mark. Rockets have gone 7 to 13 in the third quarter so far. Just above 50%. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up and two shots coming up.
Well, to back up what you talked about with the Mavs shooting, I mean, they were one of the best shooting percentage teams in the league, and they did a lot of their damage against the Western Conference, which, as we all know, is, is the much deeper conference. And that drops, so they now lead by one. As you might have expected them to be, Clark, the Rockets were very good on the road. Well, with the way that team was comprised with multiple threats on the floor offensively, it's no surprise to see them excel on the road. Well, as you said, the Rockets strong on the road last year, 21-20 and 20 record. And anytime you're over 500 on the away side, you're in a good spot. Now here's Jones. Tyson Chandler pulls it in. And now here comes Young leading the break. Trying to go for an alley-oop, but excellent defense and anticipation there to stop it. And Chandler sends it back. And as we conclude the third quarter, what a game. Neither team giving ground. Rockets ahead, leading by just one. And we're coming back in just a moment. Get ready for the fourth quarter of action when we return. Check out our State Farm assist to the game, and what a pass it was by a talented point guard. Now, this is what he does. This is the kind of plays he's known for, Kevin. Taking a look at the Rockets, Howard is out there with Smith. Then there's Gruel. Then it's Patrick Beverly. And it's a reason in at the three slot. Now here's Beverly. In low to Howard. And the shot is good. Howard's got the first field goal of the fourth quarter here for Houston. Boy, it's been a poor defensive effort. When that ball has gone inside into the post, they've been in trouble. Yep, points in the paint clearly going against them now. That's good. 20 points for Dirk Nowitzki. This has been a terrific contest up to this point, and I would guess it's going to stay this way all the way to the end. Great matchup. Probably so. Neither team wants to give an inch. Now, here's Ariza for three. It's hauled in by Nowitzki. Yeah, again, if he shot selection there, defender draped all over. Well, you got to understand who's guarding you in that situation. I mean, if he's on you tight, you can't just rise up and try to shoot over the top. Here's Harris. And the three off target. Houston leading by three. Ariza outside. No luck. Chandler with the defensive effort. Well defended. And he's not someone who responds well to that kind of defensive pressure. Harris kicks to Young. Good. And Harris gets the assist. Young's got it all tied up now for Dan. Boy, that was a pretty assist by Harris. Timeout called the Rockets. It's been quite a game for Turk Nowitzki. He just continues to light them up. They're going to have to find a way to make him work harder for his point. Let's catch up with Doris from the sideline. Well, guys, Kevin McHale had some advice for the team in that last break. As this game approaches its finale, the outcome's still undecided. He's told them, we're not far, fellas. It's within reach. Seize the moment and walk away with a win. Guys? Thank you, Doris. And we've made our way through just over a minute and a half in this fourth quarter. Here's Smith, the rim-rattling two-handed jam. How about that fantastic finish and the aggressive move, too, Kevin? Trying to send a message, Clark, with that slam, I think. Well, that's how you send it. Two hands and hammer it down. I'll tell you what, the mid-range shot is not the easiest one to make, but when you've got daylight like he had there, I mean... Those are shots you want to make. And they get it back. And that is good. So it's the Mavericks now. Four-point game. And Young, here we go. Shot from 12. He squares up and sinks it. That's now 22 points for Dirk Nowitzki. You know, as soon as he got an opening, he let it fly. That was a big shot there. And to Smith. 
uses the glass to finish the layup. And the Rockets lead by four. They've been so efficient in the paint in this game. That's an area they've totally dominated. You know, once they ID'd the edge they had inside, they just continued to attack it. And Young kicks to Harris. Offline with his three. That's some more rugged play from them inside. They have a decent edge and rebounds thus far. And that hard work on the boards needs to continue. That could be what swings this game eventually. Patrick Beverly is absolutely a hound dog defensively. He's got so much pit bull in him and how he goes about defending people at that guard spot. He's not a big playmaker or scorer. He's basically a three-point shooter and a defensive specialist. And Patrick Beverly, a nice find for the for the Houston Rockets, makes an ideal pairing with Harden in the backcourt. Yeah, he sure does, Kevin, because he's tough, he's defensive-minded. He's a good complement uh, to Harden, and I think any team in the league would love to have him just because of that toughness and that competitive desire. That free throw, no good. Well, you look at Patrick Beverly, and I think he embodies the phrase Chicago tough. And re he's relatively unknown growing up and hooping in the playgrounds of West Chicago. He's always played the game with an edge, though, and that served him well as an NBA player. Good on the second free throw. Well, Beverly learned pressure defense back in high school as the lead guard in a 1-2-2 press. To prepare his team to play, that was coach had them running stairs, running around the school nonstop for an hour every day. Still fanatical about his condition. And now both of these clubs really in a groove here. Already a high-scoring game, but it has become an offensive showcase down the stretch. Well, if you're just tuning in, welcome. We've got about three and a half minutes gone here in the fourth quarter. Shot is off. Good defensive work there by Young. And so Patrick Beverly taken in the second round in 2009. Clark, the final cut of training camp by the Miami Heat. He spent the next five years playing in Greece and in Russia. You're right, Kevin. Those are physical leagues where they allow a lot of contact. His defense was how he survived. And even now, that's his bread and butter. That's how he plays. He defends. Really good execution there, guys. They saw the mismatch, and they went right at it. Timely bucket. Couldn't have been a better opportunity. Feeds it to Smith. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. Smith playing very well. Nine points, and he's getting it done on the glass, too. Now you're right, Clark. He's done some really nice work inside. And a closer look here at the scoring breakdown for the Rockets. They've been the aggressors, and they've been tougher in the paint all game. It's been a hot shooting night for them, too. I mean, they've hit a lot of those mid-range jump shots. Well, it seems like they're having a lot of trouble at the line today, and uh, it's just been that kind of a day. Catching up on the changes for Dallas. Stoudemire's checked in for Chandler. Villanueva comes in for Al Farouk Aminu. And Berea subbed in for Harris. And the second free throw, good. Well, a semi-productive trip to the line in the end, but we'll see how costly that miss is. And Villanueva kicks to Nowitzki. And stolen by Ariza. Nowitzki against Harden. Some solid D from Nowitzki. Passes to Borrello. And out of bounds as the Rockets gain possession. Got sloppy in a close game. You have to take advantage of every opportunity. Timeout called the Rockets. They're ahead by two. There's a minute 40 left in the game. as he's checked in for Nick Young. Here's Beverly and Nowitzki with the block. To take the lead. Shot by Villanueva, no good. Now Beverly. Smith drives in. Boom, he jams it straight down. Uh, Clark, I'm guessing that wasn't the plan for the D on that trip. And I'm agreeing with you there. Once they opened the lane up for him, that was a little emphasis on that finish. 
take what the defense gives you and then just power it home, right? Why not? And you can feel the crowd react as one. Yeah, that shot got them out of their seats yeah, and they, off their they, hands. Guys, they just exploded when it went down. Here's Beverly. The Mavericks making the shot. Here's Harden on the win. In low to Howard. Shoots it up. Good. It's Harden with the assist that time. And it's now 22 points for Howard. Well, I'll bet his teammates love playing with him. He's distributing the ball perfectly. Well, he keeps everybody happy, and you know what? The assist numbers don't lie. You can see the leadership qualities on display right there, guys. It's all about communication, Kevin. You, you can't have too much of that as a team, and he, he's really leading, trying to gather his guys together. Clark? Well, I, I agree with all of that. I mean, when you're talking about orchestrating your offense and defense, that requires a lot of communication, understanding where people need to be and what everybody is doing right. And if mistakes are being made, those things have to be pointed out as well. By missing one of those, that leaves them needing a three to tie it up. Not the ideal situation. And Beverly kicks to Harden. He's looking for Howard and finds him. Money! Boy, he is such a ridiculous dunk. High riser, no doubt about it. Well, we've come to expect plays like that from him. And still, they never get old to watch. Dallas calls timeout. They trail by five. 44 seconds left in the fourth quarter. On the Mavericks with some changes. Jordan, he's checked in for Stoudemire. Chandler Parsons comes in for Charlie Villanueva. And it's Lawson in for J.J. Barrett. For Houston, they've gone 8 of 14 from the floor here in the fourth quarter. And they go to the intentional foul. We've got 33 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Here's Beverly. Back to Harden. Kicks to Beverly. He feeds it to a reason. Six to shoot. Jordan with the block. Timeout call for Rockets. They lead by two. Seven seconds left to play here in the fourth. Making a switch here. And here is Harden. He kicks it to Beverly. And so they choose to intentionally foul. Smart foul there. You've got to try to extend the game. Yeah, it's still close, but they're fighting that clock as much as the score right now. And he cannot get the first one to drop. Tough one to miss. Good, going one of two from the line, and that makes it a three-point lead. Dallas calls timeout. They're losing by three. Just two seconds left to play in the final quarter. Guys, your thoughts? They need a three to tie. They have enough time here to get a good look if they play their cards right. We'll see how they do. And here's Ellis from beyond the arc. Oh, he couldn't make that shot go to force overtime. And so it's a narrow victory for Houston, pulling it out for the double.